Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of Two Pet Posies. Um, the last two weeks have been very exciting. The first few things have been planted out. The first bouquets have been sold. So um, yeah, it's been very exciting and I'm looking forward to share that with you. Um, I'm sitting outside now. It's freezing cold. But the sun is shining for a change. Um, you'll see now in this video um, what the weather was like the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so we are enjoying the sun as much as we can. Today is Monday. I had so much planned for today. I guess I didn't read the weather forecast properly, but it is just so wet. I don't know, it started raining at some stage and it's just one stop. And um, there's absolutely no way I can do anything around here. Look, it's just a pure, pure lake now. It's not even a little puddle anymore. Miserable, miserable. I really would have loved to start planting things out this week, especially like the sweet peas. But um, look at this. There's absolutely no way. It's just too freaking wet. Oh my. Now this is a lot of water everywhere, especially in the tunnel. I don't think I've seen the tunnel as wet before. Um, but as I said, it has been raining non-stop. I'd say it started sometime last night. And um, we had the storm Kathleen, who brought quite a bit of water as well. Um, I'm not too concerned for now anyway, because usually once it stops raining, um, things drain off fairly quickly and the tunnel dries fairly quickly and also outside there in the pond area I mean it's right next to the to the stream and the water just uh, runs up relatively quickly anyway. So that was just a cheeky look outside. Um, it, there's no words for it. It's absolutely miserable. So much water. Let's just hope it stops raining soon. Um, but on the other hand, I guess I can be a bit thankful for this. I'm absolutely wrecked. I had two terrible nights. The baby just won't sleep sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm fairly tired. Um, I'm going to use now the afternoon to kind of rest a little bit maybe have a little nap even <laughs> would that be nice um but I also have a lot of things to do on the laptop so um if you're starting a business you got to think of things like websites you're going to maintain your social media um I'm working on uh, what they're called business cards so that I can get them printed and attach them to the little posies that are going to be selling um, so that people know you know where they're coming from I want to look at craft paper so that eventually I can wrap the bouquets as well and um, yeah even though I wasn't really planning on thinking about next year just yet because I want to see how it's going this year before I make any decisions uh, for further proceedings um, but the thing is, I want to have a couple of biannuals and biannuals are best sown in and around June or July. So um, I need to decide what I want to grow 
and then I will have to look into where to get the seeds from. I want to be a bit smarter about buying seeds now and only buy what I really want to grow and what I think is going to be profitable. Um, so that's something I'll be enjoying now today <laughs> while I'm on my fifth cup of tea for today already. But that's okay. It's just one of those days. And um, yeah, in the afternoon when my baby boy comes home from his daycare, we're just going to spend some family time together, which is nice too. morning it is friday morning it's not even seven o'clock yet and i'm out and about uh, for something very exciting um, so today i'll be picking flowers the best thing to do is to pick them fresh and early so that's why i'm out and they will be basically available in the garden center today just a couple of uh, jam jam posies but very exciting and I'm so happy I was awaiting today for the whole week. Now while I'm zipping away on my cup of tea, um, I will prepare the buckets. Um, I only have the kids buckets so <laughs> that I'll have to do for today. And then I have plenty of ranunculus to pick. I have several anemones. I still have a few tulips and daffodils that I can use and um, those really beautiful light blue um, muscaris. So I think they're going to be beautiful bouquets. I also have some foliage that I picked yesterday that is already ready to go in the garage. And um, yeah, then we see what we can create this morning. It's just gorgeous. Here's my bucket of foliage. Most of it is from my garden, but a little bit like this one. I uh, foraged down down the lane here in the countryside, and yeah, just like last week, they are gonna condition now for maybe about an hour or a bit more, and then. I'll get back to them. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna prepare the gem jars and the price tags. And then, yeah. It is time. It's now one and a half hours later. Um, I think that's enough time to condition the flowers for today. I have six, two, six, six, 10 gem jars. I uh, don't know if I'm gonna fill them all or not. Um, but we'll figure it out as I go. I'm not going to film myself today while I make the flowers because I think that's probably going to take a little while. Um, but yeah, I'm excited now. The little posies are ready. I managed to get 10 jars filled. They're going to be 10 euro. And I also did like, because I have no business cards, so... Uh, I know, very professional, but <laughs> it'll do for the first time. And I think they're looking lovely. I love the fresh, bright green uh, in spring. And yeah, I think I think they're lovely. I would buy it anyway. And now I just need to figure out how to get it safely over to the garden center. Now we're ready to deliver. Wish me luck that I get them over to the garden center without any damage any faults etc so that's gonna be exciting now the flowers are in the garden center 
and available to buy so it's going to be very exciting to see now um, if any of them sell but as my friend says so I'll just about the feedback as well so maybe they hear a little bit of feedback um, and I can work with it then going forward so now I'm just going to pass a little bit of time today I actually have lots to do I received a big package of Farmer Gracie bear roots um, I did order them for my birthday back in February because I got a lovely voucher and I have now about 30 bear roots to put up so that's gonna take me a while gonna keep me busy keep my mind occupied I also have a few more things to put on and yeah and then oh yeah I will also show you um I've planted a few things outside yesterday just to kind of get a start on things and I'll show you how that's looking and um what exactly I planted out I have everything potted up that took me say almost two hours now um, but it's done and the plants can grow and uh, I hope in May they'll be ready for me to plant them out into my wildlife corner I have them all secure here in the zippy I actually had to take the zippies down last weekend for the storm Kathleen um, one of the zippies tipped over and uh, it happened early in the morning and I just looked out the back door of our house, looked around the corner and I saw it was tipped over. And I freaked out, just put on shoes. I didn't even put on a jacket, ran out and got all the all the seedlings out and secured them in the poly tunnel. It is still a bit windy, but I don't think it's too windy. So the, the zippy should be fine. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a full, full zippy, full of beautiful, perennials that are good for pollinators, good for cutting and they are all winter hardy so it shouldn't be too much work. And as I said earlier and as you can see I have started to plant things out yesterday. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of what I've planted out so far. So I chose to um, plant everything or most of it into this bed for now or like to start with this bed because I think right next to the polytunnel it is a bit more secure um, especially from wind um, the bed is relatively dry considering how wet everything is and um, yeah I, I just thought that might be a good idea we will see anyway I have planted a few foxgloves here I tried to scatter the foxgloves around in the wildlife corner and other parts of the garden because I think they're so beautiful I want them to make my garden beautiful as well and I don't just want to use them for cutting so um, yeah I didn't know where to put them that's why they're in here I have a couple of fever fuse I have um, Scabiosa stellata I had sown plenty more but only two survived I have two malvas and then I have a bit more room here. I have Gypsophila Covent Garden. I have Dianthus Shabot White and Serinth. It's looking really great. And then we have the Clarkias. And you see the Clarkias are looking very, very sad. But so far my experience with the Clarkias is that whenever I put them on or disturb the roots, they're just looking like this. I'm pretty sure, um, yeah, I guess somewhat confident that they'll pick up again and that they'll look good in a little while, a couple of days, maybe a week or so. And I have the stakes up here already for now. Bamboo stakes will have to do. And I put them up because I want to put up netting. One net around this height and then one net around this height. I think the Clarkias are getting quite high. So, um, yeah, so everything is nice and supported once things are growing tall. 
now and on this side I have started with flax and with lax spore and I have also status over there now the status are relatively small there um, but if there's another frost common I have plenty of frost protection fleece that I can just put on top of it so I'm, I'm not too worried I have also started my sweet pea wall very exciting the sweet peas really needed to be planted out they look just so miserable in the small pots and um, I think I had them had them too wet at some stage so um, yeah it was just time to plant them out and I think they'll be fine here I have started with two crates I planted gladiol bulbs in it and I'm planning on planting freesias in here so but I, I haven't done the freesias yet because the freesias really don't like frost now the gladioles do need a bit of frost protection as well but again I have enough fleece so if there's any more frost coming um, which probably will happen in May sometime um, I can always pop a bit of fleece on top Now today is Tuesday, another weekend done, um, I can say it was a wild one, I was home alone with the kids and it was just, you know, one of those weekends. Anyway, I survived, thankfully. Now I'm back out in the garden and um, yeah, I've got my first bouquet salt, so that's very exciting. Um, I'm super happy about it and uh, yeah, we can go from there now. I definitely made a new customer, which um, I'm very happy about as well. And yeah, I'm in the tunnel right now. Everything is nice and lush and green. And it, um, yeah, I see if I have anything else that I can plant out. And then besides that, I want to direct sow a couple of things, mainly the vegetables, because I really have to get a start on that now, finally. But um, yeah, it, it actually looks really nice in the tunnel right now. I'm gonna show you. These are the dahlias. Most of the dahlias have woken up by now. Um, so they are looking pretty good, pretty healthy. No further gals so far. I see something here. Oh my gosh. Someone started to dig a hole in here. I still have the mouse in the tunnel. We put out the uh, mouse traps, but we didn't catch her. They did go off, but no mouse to be seen. <laughs> so maybe the traps were too small. Maybe it's a big mouse. And here, look at all the seedlings. Picking up the gross beet. Getting nice and big. A few sunflowers that actually made it. I have about 18 more sown. They have all germinated. I germinated them in tissue paper, so that always works like a charm. And look at those beautiful pansies. Violas. They're gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And yeah, everything's growing here as well. So one decision has been made over the last few days actually only um, that I would like to share with you. So if you've watched my first video, you know that we are planning to put up a flower stand and that the plan was to put it up just right here next to our garage so that people would basically drive into the driveway and park here 
and get the flowers. Now, we have changed our mind in that regard, and I want to show you what that will look like. Now, I'm on the other side of the property. You notice this one. This is our beautiful archway. And we, here we have our little side gate that leads out to the side road. So we're thinking now, instead of putting that stand right um, in the middle of our property, to put it just outside here, next to our gate. And turn you around. So this is what it looks like on the outside. This is our little side gate. And we have this little space here where we're thinking to put the stand now. We just need to decide how are we going to design it and will we put the stand on the inside and just remove a little bit of fence or what the story is, but we will figure that out. And um, I think I'm very excited about it and I think it'll be so much better because this side road here is so much less busy than the one that we have here. People are driving crazy around in the country. So um, I think it'll be much safer to have it here. Uh, it'll be a big job because we have to tidy this up so that it all looks nice and tidy. And then obviously the hedge needs to be trimmed and um, yeah, just to make it, make it look nice. Now, thank you so much for watching again today. I appreciate that very, very much. If you haven't done so and you like my videos, please uh, make sure to subscribe. It would mean the world to me. And I will see you again soon. Bye.